Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, from the dawn of flight, Oklahomans have been defiers of gravity, taking to the skies and beyond. And what's developed is an industry soaring to new heights. Today, our focus is going to be on aerospace and the jobs it provides. And where these jobs are just may surprise you. Andy Barth will take us to Ada, Oklahoma. Probably one of the single most successful aircraft modification projects in the history of general aviation. I go on a tour of facility gearing up to become the center of a multinational aerospace company's American manufacturing right here in the middle of America. Centrally located, fits really well, and the infrastructure and transportation to be able to get where we need to be is perfect here. Lisa Hines looks at the work underway to meet workforce demands for aerospace. We have actual technical training at the technology centers. We have five aviation a and programs. They're FAA certified. Plus, the head of Oklahoma's Aeronautic Commission will join us here in studio, and we'll end our day with a preview of this year's Star-Spangled Salute at Tinker Air Force Base. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Oklahoma's investment in career tech provides more than nationally recognized technology education and training. It produces solid financial returns for the state's economic future. Oklahoma Career Tech, elevating our economy. And the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. And now, from the Career Tech Studios in Stillwater, here's your host, Rob McClendon. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well, Oklahoma's rich legacy in aerospace and aviation continues to fly high. One of only seven aerospace hubs in the United States, the industry employs more than 120,000 Oklahomans all across the state. Joining me now is our Andy Barth. That's right, Rob. A company in Ada, Oklahoma, manufactures airplane parts to help them run better. And while the company is from small town Oklahoma, their impact is felt around the globe. From intricate welding to sensor-based testing, the crew at General Aviation Modifications are changing the way airplanes fly. And it all started with a little piece of brass. Tim Rail is the company's president. The game ejector fuel injector, as we call it, is uh, a set of replacement fuel injectors that is designed as replacements for the factory fuel injectors in piston aircraft engines. Probably one of the single most successful aircraft modification projects in the history of general aviation. George Raleigh is the chief engineer and Rail's business partner and together they have manufactured a product that is used in more than 22,000 airplanes worldwide. In the first year, 1996, when we developed the game ejectors, we won Aviation Consumer Magazine's Product of the Year, and we've enjoyed good sales since then. And Rail says the reason behind these good sales is improved engine quality. The flows of each fuel injector are slightly different and in doing so actually balance the fuel air ratios in the engines and make the engines run dramatically better. And because of the success of the company, the team decided to branch out. We have a, a sister company that we started in 1998 known as Tornado Alley Turbo and we build aftermarket turbocharging systems or turbo normalizing systems for certain aircraft engine combinations. It's a diverse company that for quality assurance manager Harvey Connolly is a good fit. You know, I, I get to talk to a lot of people all over the world. We ship all over the world. Uh, I deal with a lot of people from all over the industry. So, and had a lot of had a lot of fun doing that. It's very challenging, you know, but I enjoy the work. And it's work that Brawley says brings a lot of money to the community. When we sell a set of fuel injectors for, let's say, $1,000. That sale may take place in Texas, it may take place in New York State, it may take place in Europe, it may take place in South Africa or Brazil or Australia. Very little of it actually takes place here in Oklahoma. And so that $1,000 is money that comes into this community and stays here. Giving pilots around the globe a better flight all from small town Oklahoma. 
Now the modified fuel injector start at $700 and go up to 1000 and the price all depends on the make of the engine, how many cylinders it has, and whether it's turbocharged. And as George Brawley said, all of that money that comes from out of state stays in Oklahoma. Which is certainly good for their local economy. Now I also understand they're developing a new product line of fuel. They are. For the longest time, the aviation industry used a high octane leaded fuel, but this company has found a way to create a high octane unleaded fuel that doesn't decrease the performance in their airplanes and is good for the environment. All right. Thanks so much, Andy. You're welcome, Rob. Now, when we return, we'll visit with the head of Oklahoma's Aeronautic Commission. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon, featuring some of the good things that are happening in the great state of Oklahoma. Well, Vic Bird has been the director of the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission since December of 2002 and joins me now here in studio. Well, let's start off with the easy stuff. What is the Aeronautics Commission? That's thanks for giving me a softball question. Aeronautics Commission is simply stated that we're here to promote aviation and we've really been around since uh, 1963, but actually had a life before that as the Oklahoma Aviation Commission. We actually preceded the, the uh, creation of the Federal Aviation Administration uh, when it was first created as the Civil Aeronautics Administration. We were born, I guess, back in 1946 and existed for about seven, eight years. And we went away for a little bit and came back as the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission in 1963. And when I say promoting aviation, it's, it's really fairly easy. Uh, specifically, that would mean ensuring that the needs of commerce and communities across the state are met by our states, 110 airports, 110 public airports that are in our state system, and to promote our aviation and aerospace industry in the state, which is one of our state's top three employers. Talk to me about aviation jobs, not only the, the demand, but the prospects for the future and just really where we're heading in the state. Well, we're still, uh, as I said, it's one of the top three employers. We, uh, when, you, when you count the direct jobs, which still come in at about 75,000 jobs in the aviation aerospace sector, and you count the indirect jobs, which is about another 75,000, you're at about 150,000. That, that's a pretty remarkable because that means about one in 10, one in 11 Oklahomans in the workforce, not our total population, but in our workforce, really derive their income, their salary, some way, shape, form from aviation aerospace. But our largest single side employer in the state is Tinker Air Force Base. And the last time I checked, that has to do with, with things with wings that fly around in the air. Tinker is the largest military aircraft repair facility in the world, right here in Oklahoma. Uh, 28,000, 27 to 28,000 jobs, about 18,000 civilian jobs, 10,000 uniform jobs. Uh, American Airlines on the commercial side on the commercial side its only maintenance base left after its its bankruptcy uh, is in Tulsa Oklahoma that is its maintenance and engineering uh, base in Tulsa that's for American and the new you know the newly merged American American and US Airways provides about 6,500 jobs uh, Lufthansa might want to argue with us a little bit. I still believe that the American base in Tulsa is the largest commercial aircraft repair facility in the world. And that's really the, the, the heart of our industry is maintenance repair and overhaul or components manufacturing, parts manufacturing for aircraft to get them back up in the air. That, that's our sweet spot. Knowing what you do know, Vic, what would you tell the young person that's thinking about a career or maybe the parent or grandparent of a young person about aviation? The people that won us the Cold War and the space race, and we got to the moon first. We're the only nation that ever got there and came back safely. No other nation has done that with, with a human. Those people are retiring in droves. They're, they're, they're older. They're, they're baby boomers and, and, and maybe pre-baby boomers. They're, they're leaving our aerospace, aerospace and defense industry. We need to replace those people. Those are a in, in, lot of engineers, a lot of scientists, so that's higher education. But that isn't for everyone. So for those people that, that, that that's not the way for them, we need aircraft, aircraft and frame mechanics. Some call them aviation maintenance technicians, a lot of words for them. We need people at machinist. We need uh, uh, all kinds of people like that that need degrees, sort of certifications that come right from career tech and our career tech centers around the state. These are good jobs. These aren't. Uh, what you oh well you do anything if your hands and you're not no 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 when you're talking about an airframe and power plant mechanic 
At American Airlines, that person may earn, well, $60,000 a year. Uh, at AAR, which I haven't mentioned AAR down in Oklahoma City, that's, that's the largest third-party MRO in North America. That, that's a lot to say. That, that's, a, that's a big statement, and, and one of their biggest facilities are right here in Oklahoma City. They are a non-union shop. However, if you, you know, with a little overtime there, you're going to be in the $40,000, maybe $50,000 range as, a, as an airframe and power plant mechanic. And at Tinker, uh, they look for them all the time. Uh, we're talking about $50,000 after a few years there. These are very good jobs. So good jobs that are also in demand. Now, looking forward, what are some of the things that our state faces if we're going to maintain our very strong legacy in aviation and aerospace? Well, I think we've, we've, we've got to have a strong higher ed system. We've got to have a strong career tech system and a strong common ed system. They all go together. If, if we don't, our silver bullet in Oklahoma has been the workforce. And if we don't have the workforce, we will not have the industry. All right. Thank you so much. Big Bird with Thank the you. Aeronautics Commission. Thank you. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, a star-spangled salute at Tinker Air Force Base. But first, more jobs coming into the state. Well, few industries are more global in scope than aviation. So when a world leader in aircraft component design announced the opening of a 715,000 square foot facility stretched across 79 acres in Stillwater, Oklahoma, you can just imagine that town's excitement. Since that announcement in 2012, work has been underway to retool both a facility and a workforce to meet the demands for a target industry for the state. What looks like a cavernous hole today will soon become just the latest expansion in Oklahoma's aviation legacy. Uh, their production forecasts are higher than I've ever seen in my career, and they continue to rise every year. Don Carlisle is vice president of ASCO Aerospace USA and says rapid advances in technology is changing how the aviation industry operates. As airplanes are so different than they used to be, the life cycle of the airplane is much shorter. They're, they're designing replacements for the current airplanes today that will be out of service in 10 years. They continue to get so efficient and so comfortable that the airlines need these airplanes to, uh, to make their uh, economics work. So uh, it's unlike in the olden days where or years past where you'd fly an airplane for 30 years. Uh, today, the, the technology advances so quickly that uh, the old airplanes get so inefficient that uh, you can't afford not to buy the new airplane. Which is why in the summer of 2012, Belgium-based ASCO Industries announced it was opening a manufacturing center for the Americas in Stillwater, Oklahoma. We looked at an available workforce, cooperation between Meridian Technology training of our employees for specific jobs here, and the university doing research collaboration with us, which they are. And it all started to come together as far, from a technical standpoint. Not to mention geographic. Located 70 miles west of Tulsa's commercial aircraft maintenance, repair, and overhaul hub, Stillwater is just 60 miles northeast of Oklahoma City's Tinker Air Force Base, the home of the largest U.S. Department of Defense depot and the world's largest MRO for military aircraft. I started looking, centrally located, fits really well, and the infrastructure and the transportation to be able to get where we need to be is perfect here. I mean, it's in the center of the United States, great highways. Even if you need to ship something by barge, you go to Tulsa and Port of Catoosa and go by water. Which is critical for an industry that is increasingly global. Larry Parman is Oklahoma's Secretary of Commerce. You have fewer and fewer companies, it seems, occupying a larger and larger space in the international market. So it's very important to us to be competitive from the, from the state's point of view so that we can continue to attract internationally based companies into Oklahoma and be a part of that growing economy. So we all know what, how important aerospace is to the international economy and what a driver it is. It's, it's very amazing to think that Stillwater, Oklahoma can be so integrally connected to that. ASCO is expected to employ up to 600 people in the new plant, a huge influx of jobs for a university town with a population of less than 50,000. 
what OSCO has, has done is really created a lot of opportunity for Stillwater, and not just the immediate through OSCO, but the potential of growth within the aerospace industry. Stillwater Mayor John Bartley. We have a strong aerospace history already in Stillwater. Frontier Engineering, Frontier Electronics have been players in aerospace for 30 years. With OSCO and how large they are on an international standpoint, it really sets us up to be able to pursue other companies, similar companies within the line, uh, not necessarily from a competitor standpoint, but from uh, complementary companies that can really add to and create a lot of synergy. Oklahoma is a great place to live from an economic standpoint. So the thought was being here where it's affordable, and especially if you have a young family, this is a great place to live and, and raise kids. Very affordable, you know, you know, a lot of bang for your buck, as opposed to some of the larger cities around. Uh, it's just a great place. So we looked at that as a draw to be able to get the technical and professional help that we wanted. And then the state, you know, I read the paper every day about different states, I won't name them, that appear to make it very difficult to do business. That's not the case here. From day one, we met with the Department of Commerce, Department of Environmental Quality, State of, of Oklahoma, the Governor's Office, incredible. Uh, you know, the incentives, they help, but they weren't the determining factor. The determining factor was the proactive part of the government around here in working with us. It made us feel like they wanted us, and they would help us every step along the way, and they have. And it's been incredible. And then the city of Stillwater, as you witnessed today, they're all here, they're involved, they've helped, they've, they've been engaged. So it's just been a really great partnership between the state, the local community, and the educational uh, facilities around here. So it's a, it's a good fit. Now the state-of-the-art lean manufacturing facility will comprise machining, heat, and surface treatments, as well as assembly for complex machine parts out of titanium, steel, and aluminum. Now, full production for ASCO Aerospace USA is scheduled for the end of this year. Well, with the projected global growth in aerospace, workforce development will be key in maintaining Oklahoma's aviation legacy. As Elisa Hines reports, work is underway to train for jobs that range from design and development to manufacturing and repair. With aerospace job demand soaring high in Oklahoma, the challenge now is finding skilled workers. H.L. Baird is with Oklahoma's Career Tech System and says it starts at an early age. Career Tech has a pretty comprehensive program. We uh, connect with uh, students early in middle school with experiential programs. They do a lot of uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, the lessons on everything from wind tunnels to uh, rocket powered cars and that sort of thing. Get them excited about engineering. And then we also have uh, pre-engineering programs that they'll get involved in 10th through 12th grade. You can't wake up in 11th grade and decide you want to be an aerospace engineer. So we get them the foundational pieces and help them be successful in going on to a college degree. So they just have a better understanding of what they're going to experience. And plus they do a lot of the preparatory academics that they need to be successful. Jacob Pierce is planning to be an aerospace mechanical engineer. Now enrolled at OSU, he got a head start with his Project Lead the Way pre-engineering classes at Francis Tuttle Technology Center. Doing it, I found it actually, it took math and science and put life applications to it where you could actually go into a career where you use those every day and it's actually useful. And so after my first year here, I was like, hey, I could do this. And so I kept doing it and I do. Um, I actually enjoy the thought of engineering. It's helping solving problems and also you get to use math and science and it's a big part of the, they um, put that into the curriculum in every course I take. And while students like Jacob want to build planes, others prefer to fix them. We have actual technical training at the technology centers. We have five aviation A&P programs, they're FAA certified. That prepares people to go into the maintenance and repair and overhaul industry in Oklahoma, which is a very, very large industry for us an industry that allows Jeffrey Brown to stay close to home. Great career field to get into, one of the best around here, you know, if not the best, so it's been fun. And Career Tech even specializes their training. We have specific adult training for targeted jobs like aerospace sheet metal and aerospace avionics. Training that John Stegan says changed his life. They're not going to let anybody fail. Uh, they work with you, even the, even the hardest parts. Uh, 
Um, they walked me right through it. It just seemed natural the way they presented the course once I got into it. I knew there was opportunities out there, but I didn't realize they were that vast. And when I got into it, it's like, whoa, this is <laughs> a whole new career. It opened doors that I never thought could be opened. Doors for all ages. So we touch them early and we provide training all the way through the end. And we're always on the lookout looking for indicators where the, the demand is high enough for us to create new programs. One of the greatest things about career tech is we can start and stop much faster than any other educational entity. So we're really positioned well to take care of the aerospace industry. We know it's important to Oklahoma and we're ready to do whatever we can to support it. Danielle Hagen says career tech offers her the opportunity to do what she loves, working with airplanes. It's a really high demand right now, and it's actually fun. So I like it. You can build things, and it's really neat. It's like, wow, you know, I made this. According to Baird, the only challenge is piquing students' interest in a career that can last a lifetime. Just that we know there's a bright future for students in aerospace and that we don't have the natural media of the space race and things like that to entice them into it. But it's a highly lucrative career and it's exciting and we just need kids to look up. Now Lisa tells us many of the jobs available in the aerospace industry have an average starting salary of $22 an hour and many people can earn fifty to $60,000 their very first year, well above Oklahoma's average starting wage. Want to share something you've seen here today? Well, all of our episodes are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Or you can subscribe to our weekly free podcast on iTunes. Well, the Thunderbird aerial demonstration team is set to headline this year's Star Spangled Salute Air Show at Tinker Air Force Base later this month. Joining me now with more on this year's event is the event's announcer, Daniel Stroud. Well, this is the first time we've had the event in a few years. What's been the holdup? I've done all of the Tinker Star Spangled Salutes, and the last one we did was in 2010. And it takes so darn much planning and so much financing from both uh, military and civilian sponsors that uh, they decided to go to an every other year format. So they waited a couple of years and that was about the time that sequestration and uh, the economy started taking a hit. So they literally uh, lost the jet teams. Uh, the Thunderbirds and the Blue Angels were actually allowed to practice, but they weren't allowed to go to any air shows. And that pretty much shut down a whole lot of large air shows. So it's taken this long to get everybody back up to speed. We got approval from the Thunderbirds to come to another Tinker show, and it's just simply taken that long and to get the financing. Now, a lot of the financing from the Star Spangled Salute came from sponsors like, like my friends at the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission. We're a big sponsor for a Star Spangled Salute, but it's taken a lot of other sponsors as well to pay for the acts. And even the Thunderbirds, even though it's a military team coming to a military base, they're not cheap. You have to get hotel rooms and cars and workout rooms and all kinds of things to get them to your base. But they also bring in a huge crowd. And uh, at the 2010 show, we had over 160,000 people in a two day show. It was the largest single event in Oklahoma history. Wow, that's a lot of eyes to the sky. It really is, uh -huh. really is. And uh, we're expecting somewhere between 100 and say 130,000 this year. Now you've been involved in the Star Spangled Salute for quite some time. Why do you think it's so important to do this? Oh, Rob, it's, uh, uh, you know, the easy answer would be to say Tinker likes to have the public come out and, and enjoy themselves. but. Honestly, it's deeper than that, and most people don't even think about this, but it's sort of like bring your family to work day and see mom or dad or brother or sister or uncle or aunt at work. And to me, the Star Spangled Salute is one of those rare times when the family gets to come out and see what their loved ones actually do. So the one question probably everyone's wanting to hear, when is it and how can they get involved? It's uh, June 21st and 22nd. That's the weekend after Father's Day weekend. Uh, the gates open at uh, 9 o'clock, close at 6. 
and at six o'clock everybody will go home and if they want to come back Sunday they can come back and there will be some minor changes between Saturday and Sunday but the Thunderbirds will fly both days. Team Tinker will be flying uh, both days. The World War II aircraft will be flying. All of our performers will be there both days so you won't miss anything. They're going to have a, a couple of bands on stage for entertainment. Uh, oh and we've got the Kid Zone and that's pretty cool because the Aeronautics Commission is the sponsor of the Kid Zone. The kids will be able to come out and go into an inflatable and jump up and down down and, and they'll have a good time too. As, lo, uh, as well as us big kids that, that like airplanes. Well, Dan, I appreciate it. I like the inflatables by. too. <laughs> well, if well, I'll get a shot of you <laughs> jumping around. All right, Dan. We appreciate you coming by. Sure. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. So, how many jobs will you have over your career? Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we look at the growing trend of job hopping. I worked as a shipyard worker, sheet metal mechanic, and welder for around six years. And the rest of my life, I worked in factories, manufacturing, boat motor plants, assembly, things of that nature. During the recession, I was laid off from my job. Plus, we'll meet the author of the book, The Coming Jobs War, on Oklahoma Show for the Heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Well, we are out of time. I'm Rob McClendon. Thanks for watching. See you back here next week.